You know, one of the most triggering statements I've ever had in my life is that God doesn't feel sorry for you. And, you know, you might hear this statement, might trigger something, but I'm going to be sharing the insights into this beautiful statement and why I think it's one of the most profound statements I've ever had in my entire life. So watch the video to learn more. My name is Eva. I'm an intuitive healer. I work with two modalities or certified into modalities. One retreat is based on working with the Akashic Records. It's called soul realignment. And the second one is about rewiring your nervous system to breath, work, sound, and movement with a beautiful, beautiful process called quantum flow. And I'll be sharing more on these two modalities at the end of this video. So if you're curious about how you want to work with me and how I can actually help you accelerate your healing, accelerate your growth, accelerate your transformation, because these two modalities can make such a huge impact in your life. I'm going to be sharing more on that and who these two modalities will be a great fit for. So if you're curious about this, make sure you watch until the end of this video, okay? So I love starting my videos by sharing my lesson for the week. It's been an interesting week, you know, with an interesting lesson that came up in the last, um, the first three days of the week, which was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, actually. And one of the lessons that I really got to integrate was neutrality, in the sense that not judging any situation or any person to be good or bad, but just training yourself to embody the state of neutrality because the minute we start labeling things is when we start kind of like first of all having expectations on that person or that situation or we just kind of like bring on our own suffering right and if you can train yourself regardless of whatever is happening around you and I get it we go through certain situations that are really difficult and of course, I'm not saying reject the feelings of difficultiness or feeling sad or anything, because one of the worst things you can actually ever do is reject that authentic expression. So if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling disappointed, by all means, go through that process. Not to run away from it, not to try and numb the pain, but let yourself experience that grieving process, that disappointment, that anger, because that helps you to release that state faster rather than you just rejecting or avoiding it or trying to be something that you can tap into right now but I want to share this lesson because it's something that I'm still learning to master so I haven't gotten there yet but I know a lot of the great teachers who walked in this planet they had embodied this in such a beautiful way that even when bad things were happening to them they will not judge the person in front of them they will just be it will seem like kind of coldish. I don't want to say cold. Um, but they will adopt this state of neutrality because the greatest teachers will actually know that whatever experience they're going through, whatever attack, whatever um, judgment they're going or experiencing because of another person, that action does not define the person because they know that there's a, there's a deeper truth a deeper divinity that's in that person so with the greatest teachers it was about embodying that state of neutrality not judging a situation good or bad in that sense then controlling your reaction to certain situations and i've shared this before on my channel when i shared um the story about the guy a father and a son who were first of all poor and the neighbors will laugh at them and the, and the father will always respond, good or bad, who knows? Because honestly, regardless of whatever situation you're, you're experiencing, you have no way of knowing whether it's actually good for you or whether it's bad for you. And when we're constantly, constantly reacting or giving into those emotions in the moment, you create that um, uh, an end result that might actually end up with you suffering a consequence that you really did need to suffer. But once you take on that neutrality where you're not overly um, taken over by the emotions of goodness or the emotions of badness, and you just, it's, it's just a situation, you obtain mastery of that situation, okay? So that was my lesson for the weekend, especially with everything that's happening in the world, you know, I know I've shared this before on the channel, it's that, regardless of where you look it just seems like there's a lot of 
chaos and a lot of bad energy, negative energy that's all over the world. And if you're not able to master yourself, to look at it from a higher perspective of not labeling it as good as bad, you'll constantly find yourself just being, you know, blown left, right, center. You know, this day you're feeling so good because something good happened. The next day, boom, something tragic has happened, takes over your emotions, and you'll always find yourself being a slave the circumstances and you're not a slave you're a master and a creator of your experience so if you can adopt a state of neutrality regardless of whatever is happening in your life that will be I, I, an honestly power move for you okay so i'm still learning that so this week was my my i want to say um another reinforcement of that lesson for me okay so that was my lesson and i'd love to know from you how have you grown how have you transformed? How have you evolved in this last week and this day, regardless of when you're watching this? Please share your lessons down below because I believe that everyone's unique experience, everyone's unique perspective can help us grow and learn, regardless of whatever you're tuning into. So share down below because you never know who, who might watch and might get inspired by you sharing your experience. Okay, so share in the comments. And yeah, so let's get started on today's topic. So I said a very triggering statement that God actually does not feel sorry for you. I remember hearing this from one of my teachers and thinking like, it, it kind of like blew my mind because I think growing up or how you've been conditioned, especially if you have a religious background, it's when you're in pain, you run to God and, you know, the more you cry, the more you pray, the more you do all those things that you're supposed to do, you know, God will feel sorry for you and then come and rescue you. And hearing this statement just took me back to, you know, that condition, because basically it was a condition where you're always expecting a savior or something bigger than you to come and save you. And one of the hardest lessons I had to learn is that you're going to have to save yourself. Not in the sense that you're going to have to do everything on your own because you're always having guidance around you from your guides, from your angels, from your higher self always assisting you, but they're never going to take the hard actions for you. So the only thing they can do is give you guidance on like, okay, time to stand up, time to go here and all of that, but you actually have to take the action to get yourself out of whatever mess you're in. There's a video I saw of a kid who had just a reel on social media. So it's a kid who has his hand stuck in a job and crying their eyes out like he, he would feel pain for the kid. And then the adult in the room removes the hand. The kid looks at it, smiles and laughs, and then goes back and sticks his hand in the job and then starts crying again. I thought it to be so funny because clearly... When you when you don't actually know the perspective of what, what is actually going on, you might think that this child is in so much pain and we've been tortured by that hand by the job, but they're putting themselves in that situation. In their mind, they're actually having so much fun, okay? Loving the attention and people just, are you okay? You know, that kind of attention, right? That is what the kid was having fun with, you know, just crying so that people pay attention to him or whatever. But if the kid wanted to get himself out, he will just as easily pull his arm off and he will it hurt him. And this is literally what you go through through life. And this is why I'm saying that God doesn't actually feel sorry for you because you have everything you need within you to actually save yourself. So if you're waiting for a higher being or a higher whatever it is to sit down and say, oh, poor you, poor whoever is watching this, poor Eva, poor you. Oh my, I feel so sorry for you. Like, let me just, no, that's never going to happen. So if you have that kind of mindset, it's never going to happen. You're going to have to get yourself out of it. And another beautiful analogy I can give you is that, you see, like, when a kid is playing and then falls down and happens to scrape um, their hand or their knee, whatever, of course, the immediate reaction is always to cry. And this is why I was saying that don't reject those emotions. They're necessary in helping you release whatever trauma, whatever experience you've had that does not support your highest being. But even if the kid cries, right, the only thing the parent can do is maybe come and help him to stand up, maybe dust him off, maybe give him a hug and all of that. But at the end of the day, the experience of that pain 
the parent cannot feel. The only thing you can do is feel sorry for you and maybe help you with rubbing a salve or something, just something to help you with the wound. But you're going to have to do the healing process and experience the healing process for yourself. There is no other way. And of course, you're going to have to, the kid will have to learn the lesson, maybe not to run around or be very careful when they're play, playing so that they don't have to fall down again and hurt themselves again. That's the lesson that the kid has to go through. They can't run away from that. And this is literally what you go through in life. So it's not that God does not witness your pain or does not care, right? Yes, God can help you, can help you stand up, can help you scrape up and maybe just relief, but you're going to have to experience the lesson and the healing journey for yourself. That you cannot run away from that. That's part of the reality we live in. At the end of it all, you're going to have to get yourself out of that mess. You're going to have to get yourself off the ground. What most people do is that when they're going through a painful circumstance, they want the world to witness their pain, which is okay. This is where you call in your friends, you're calling your family, and you're crying and, and saying, poor me, I can't believe. Oh, I'll give this perspective of, like, I can't believe I lost my job. I can't believe that person, my partner, walked away from me, my partner cheated on me and all of that. And fine, the people around you are going to feel sorry for you. They're going to hug you. They're going to try to alleviate that. But at the end of it all, they can't have the experience of that pain that you have. So as much as they want to help, the only thing they can do is kind of like give you a surface level um, healing. Just take your mind off of it just for a bit. But the experience and the consequences and the lessons that you have to learn from whatever painful experience you're going through, you're going to have to learn it yourself. No one can take that from you. You're going to have to get yourself out of that. Of course, you have a choice. You can choose as a kid to just sit there and lie down and say, you know what? I'm never going to stand again. I'm never going to play again because they never want to get hurt, which again is also another thing that people do. They just want to avoid the pain so much that they're never going to get them keep themselves in that situation again. So that it's, um, it causes them to stagnate in life. They don't want to get involved in another relationship that might break them. They don't want to um, go through the experience of getting the job and then you don't know if you're going to be stable in that job or not. They don't want to go through that, so they'd rather that stagnate and just sit there until the pain is over, which doesn't work because, again, it also disempowers you because you take away the experience of all those other good things that might be awaiting for you if you just let yourself stand up and continue with the life, okay? So, yes, the people around you can be a witness to you. They can feel sorry for you. They can cry with you. But that pain, you're going to have to learn how to handle it. The healing journey, no one can do that for you. You're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to get off, do whatever it takes to help that wound to heal fast. Learn the lesson. I always say this. You have to learn the lesson. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in the same situation again and again until you learn the lesson, which is basically what we're here for. We're here to grow, to evolve, to create ourselves in different and beautiful ways. But as long as you're just stuck on this one thing, this one lesson that you just can't seem to get, that's where you're going to be stuck for the rest of your life or experience here. And also, in whatever lifetimes are waiting for you, because you cannot run away from this lesson. You are an infinite being. You get to live forever and ever and ever. And regardless of how long it takes you to learn whatever lesson you need to learn, you're going to have to learn it. So... Go back to that statement of God doesn't feel sorry for you. He knows you have what it takes to get yourself out of it. He's already given you the tools. Okay, so if you're waiting for God to just be like, okay, now I feel sorry for you. Now here, let me give you this partner now who's going to match whatever thing that you want to manifest. Okay, just to so that you don't cry anymore. That's never going to happen. That's not part of our experience. If you want that for yourself, you're going to have to get yourself out there and take whatever actions to get yourself out of those patterns so that you don't make those mistakes again. And now when that person comes in, they're going to be a match to a new and improved you. Now, based on the old self who didn't have, who had not learned the lesson, but based on the new you who's learned and evolved and grown from that lesson. That's how I want you to look at it. Okay.
I hope everything I've shared on this live or on this video has actually helped you to integrate that and integrate that theme. And let me know, did this statement actually trigger you that God doesn't feel sorry for you? And the reason why is because he's already, he already knows that you have everything it takes to get yourself out of whatever mess you're in. You just need to realize that and take that action of healing and walking away from that pain. No one is coming to do that for you. Okay, so share your comments down below if this has resonated, what you've learned, if it triggered you, if it hasn't triggered you, I want to know from you. Share in the comments down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe and also, you know, make sure you click on the notification bell that's next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any content I load I upload every week. Okay, so I'd love to hear from you so that I can also learn how I can help you grow and transform yourself. So Adisha was going to uh, talk about what the two modalities I'm certified in that I help my clients with, you know, to heal and release their past trauma, the blockages, their, their limiting patterns, their limiting beliefs, okay, with these two beautiful modalities. So let me just share the screen so you can actually get to see if this is going to be a good fit for you or not, okay? So the first modality is called soul relevant. So soul relevant is all about, it's a healing modality that's based on working with Akashic Records. And it's about understanding your soul's unique journey, your soul's unique nature and gifts. And, and basically how you can leverage this gift to create a beautiful experience for yourself. Most people, especially in the world we live in, we're going through a bombardment of information left, right, center, and everyone coming up with different paths to success that the only way you're going to get success is this way. If you keep tapping into everything and going against how you were designed to experience this life, the only thing that does is that it creates, first of all, blocks within your blueprint. And blocks within your blueprint means that you cannot, okay, what that happens is that you cannot create the kind of experience you want for yourself because you basically won't have what you need to do that because you've blocked from accessing your divine gifts. Your divine gifts make it easier for you to navigate this world. And of course, the more you can tap into the true nature of yourself, the easier it is for you to create better experiences in your health, in your finances, and in your relationships. So if you're experiencing this function in these three areas, chances are it's just a sign that you're going against your true nature, you're going against your true soul's path. Note one path is the same as the other. Remember, you have a unique coding and a unique blueprint that you're supposed to use to create your human experience. So it's never going to look like someone else, regardless of what the world wants to tell you, okay? So soul relevant is all about realigning how we show up in our human experience and also helping you realign with your original divine soul blueprint at the point of your initial creation, okay? So the first thing, you were created to be this, but of course, with your different um, lifetime experiences and all the choices that you made, if you made choices that went against your blueprint, you've been creating these blocks within your blueprint for a very long time. And what happens is that a lot of the experiences that you've had in your life currently, chances are they literally have nothing to do with this lifetime. It's probably life, past life choices that you made, and because they're within your blueprint, you keep on attracting the same circumstances, the same people over and over again. Again, not to punish you, okay, but in an attempt for your soul to help you resolve this negative karmic pattern so that you can start making new and better choices for yourself. Okay, most people have no aware awareness of what those choices are, so they keep on repeating the same mistakes again and again. So, and I'm going to be sharing who soul realignment is for. So first of all, the core principle of soul realignment is that Practical is full information that can have transformational value. Again, we live in a world where information is just everywhere. It's so relevant. It's actually just really fine-tuning that information. So I'm not giving you information just for the sake of you having information. I'm giving you information that has transformational value for you. Meaning that if you apply everything that we talk about in our reading or in your reading, in your daily experience, through your daily actions and all of that, you're going to start experiencing transformation in your experiences, okay? So that's something that you can expect from a soul relevant training. You're also given free will and choice. So the one thing that I tell my clients is that with this is, first of all, taking responsibility for everything you've created. One of the hardest things that I know for a lot of people on the healing journey 
is that they want to do the blame game. You know, I'm in pain because that person hurt me. I'm in pain because this and this happened to me. But with 12 or 11, it's actually helping you understand how your choices, which might be scary, contributed to that experience. But once you understand that, then that means that you're not waiting for another person to do something so that you can heal. You have the power, and you're taking back your power to heal yourself by making different choices so that you don't find yourself in the same circumstances again. Of course, you'll also experience a soul level healing through the Akashic Records. You're going to get an energetic healing through the reading, through our talk and all of that. And of course, one of the most important things I always tell my client is that I'm not actually help healing you. You're the one who's healing yourself. So the, the soul element is just giving yourself that power back or taking back your power back to actually heal and release all the trauma that you've been carrying around with you so who is so relevant for so if you feel yourself stuck in repetitive negative patterns whether in your finances your relationships or health so relevant can help you get to the root cause of what those what is causing those repeating patterns so that you can start making new choices and get yourself out of those patterns if you're struggling with self-identity and feeling disconnected from your true purpose and all of that so relevant can help you give you a blueprint that can help you once you learn who you are then how you also show up in the world is going to change and you're going to be rooted with a deeper love and acceptance of who you were designed to be and who how you're supposed to basically show up in the world if you find yourself experiencing constant roadblocks and challenges that seem to have no clear cost or solution so relevant will be a good fit for you if you have difficulty understanding why certain relationships or certain experiences have been happening in your life over and over again. Again, soul relevant can help explain that. If you have past trauma and explained fears and all of that, soul relevant can help you get to the root cause and also help you energetically heal whatever is causing that. Okay. If you lack clarity about the career or life direction, once you know your soul level divine gift, it can help make that whatever choice you need to make much clearer. Okay, so I'm not telling you that this is going to be your purpose, but once you have a deeper understanding that this is how you're meant to operate, then it might make it easier for whatever choices you're going to make going forward or what career, or what life direction you'd love to tap into. Of course, if you're feeling trapped in limiting beliefs and recurring self-sabotaging behaviors, and if you have a deep desire for emotional healing and freedom from your burdens of the past, so relevant could be great, great fit for you. Okay, so the second reading is called the second modality I work with is called quantum flow. So quantum flow is an embodiment mechanism that actually utilizes breath box on the movement to help you release deep seated wounds and traumas that and emotional blockages that are within your nervous system. So what most people don't know is that a lot of your past life, not past life, but but also past life, okay, um, a lot of your experiences all the way from ch childhood. Even in your mother's womb, if your mother was going through experiences that were kind of negative, all of that got recorded within your unconscious mind. And your unconscious mind is deeply connected to your nervous system. So it's quantum flow. It's that it's helping you release even traumas, even blockages that you might not even know you have within you through this beautiful breath of sound and movement, right? So helping you break down those patterns within your nervous system because for a lot of people, the way they react, the way they show up in the world is based on their unconscious beliefs and patterns that are within their unconscious mind. And so they never know why they have certain experiences with their relationships, why they keep on reacting in a certain way, because they have no idea that those trauma is locked or, or stored within their nervous system. So with quantum flow, even without awareness of what those patterns are, sometimes we know, sometimes we don't know. Every time you do a quantum flow practice, you're breaking down those old traumas and old blockages, okay? So if you're struggling with embracing inner peace, regardless of what's happening in the world, remember I talked about embodying neutrality at the beginning of this video. So well, you know, quantum flow can actually help you build that unshakable inner peace, regardless of whatever is happening around you. If you're having problems with tapping into your purpose, your 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 true path in life. The thing is that for your higher guidance to come through, as long as you have these emotional blockages within you, you'll never be able to tune into what is the next best step for you from your soul. So you're constantly going to be making choices that probably negate or take you away from your soul's path because you have no clarity or no ability to actually tap into higher, higher guidance for yourself. 
So it's quantum flow. Once you break down this pattern, it makes it easier for you to receive that guidance from your higher self. If you want to access flow states, creativity, a sense of inner peace, clarity, tap into your authentic self. If you want to tap into higher states of being in your emotional, in your mental, in your physical well-being, quantum flow will be a good fit for you. So why would quantum flow work for you? If you struggle with mental fog or difficulty concentrating, or maybe you have suffer from low productivity, quantum flow can help with that. If you struggle with chronic anxiety and stress, the minute you do a quantum flow practice, I kid you not, this can just help you shift just like that in that moment. And the beauty is that you can do quantum flows many times in a day. So you're not limited to just one time and then that's it. It's as many times as you need that process to work for it. If you're feeling physically and emotionally drained and you're unable to relax or achieve inner peace, even if you're experiencing a sort of chronic pain or physical tension, with quantum flow, it will aid in your healing, meaning that whatever emotional blockages or whatever thing that has been causing that pain to manifest in that area, once you release the blockages, it might help relieve that pain. So it's not a, a substitute for medical, whatever it is that you're using, but it will be a great addition to whatever um, healing thing you're taking right now to help with that pain or that physical tension, okay? If you have difficulty controlling your emotions, if you're feeling disconnected from your higher purpose or intuition, if you're struggling with unresolved trauma from childhood, that continues to affect you in your daily life. If you find yourself just struggling in constant limiting beliefs and negative thought patterns that constantly keep you in a state of fear, in a state of scarcity, in a state of feeling hopelessness and all of that, quantum flow can really, really help you rewire and release those limiting beliefs and help you tap into empowering belief systems that can help you attain a sense of love, of peace, of fulfillment within yourself, okay? So, if you are curious about these two modalities and you'd love for me to be your coach and your guide in this experience, I invite you to connect with me by you can scan the QR code or I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description box of this video to connect with me. You can connect with me by booking a discovery call and we can help determine whether these two modalities is a good fit for you. Or you can connect with me on Facebook or Instagram by direct messaging me and I'll be happy to respond to you at you know the earliest opportunity so thank you so much for tuning into this video and i'm wishing you a lovely week of growth of transformation of involvement don't forget to learn something new and share down below so that we can also learn and celebrate you in that regard so thank you so much make sure you subscribe to my channel if you do like the kind of content i share out here and let me know what you would love to hear from me do you have any burning questions so that whatever videos I'm doing in the future can actually help me address you and help you release whatever has been keeping you stuck? Okay, so thank you again and bye for now.